Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, this is Anna Cardno from Wadarapa DHB with Wraparound Wadarapa and this is a show brought to you every Wednesday morning on Arrow FM. We're live every fortnight and we bring together all the different services around Wadarapa so that uh, people connecting with different opportunities that are available in, for them in the community can hear all about it on the show and on the Arrow FM website. And this morning I am very lucky to have with me some representatives from Wadarapa Cancer Society. We have Jacinta Buchanan, manager. Morning, Jacinta. Good morning, Anna. And Susan McWilliam, who is here in her capacity as the chair of Relay for Life, which we all know and love here in the Wadarapa. It's nice to have you with us. Thank you, Anna. It's great to be here. And I guess, can we start with Relay? We've just been talking about Relay for Life, and you've got um, a neat amount of teams, that more than you were expecting. We're doing well so far. Relay, of course, is on the 20th and 21st of March, so we've got a bit of time yet before we have to cut the number of teams off. And 32 teams currently registered, so that's above what we were hoping for, but we're still open for more teams to register. Fantastic. And how do they do that? If someone wants to register for Relay? They can ring the Cancer Society and get an information pack, and that has all the details they need for the number of team members, when Relay starts, when it finishes, what the protocols are, and then put in their team and register with Vanessa Jane at the Cancer Society. $10 per person is the entry fee, so that's only two cups of coffee. And then they get on with their fundraising and make much-needed funds to help the services in the Wairarapa. Brilliant. And of course, if you're not in a team and you are busy that weekend or can't be in a team, you can uh, get involved by by um, contributing to the fundraising. Absolutely. Right? Donating to yes. anybody with a bucket. Any, Absolutely, like yep. this bucket here. <laughs> and also there are lots of fundraising events around the Wairarapa. There are car washes, there are morning teas, there are various events that people <coughs> are doing. Uh, my team is having a dinner at the Marston Club on the 26th of February and so if people want to come along to that again they can contact the Cancer Society and get the details. So I'm sure if you just listen to people, look around, there'll be lots of fundraising events people can get involved with. Fantastic. That sounds great. Jacinta, you're obviously incredibly busy at the Cancer Society and you have um, a whole list of things that we can get through today in terms of what you want to talk about. So I'm best just to hand it over to you and um, and let's get started. What okay. would you like people to know about the Cancer Society and what you can offer? Thanks, Anna. Um, <clears throat> I think probably a good place to start is um, how do you get to be um, registered with the Cancer Society? A lot of people just assume that your GP or the hospital or your specialist will refer you uh, to us. That's not necessarily the case because we're a charity and we're outside of the medical fraternity. Um, you need to actually um, ask your health provider for a referral or you can just walk in and meet us and we'll register you for our services. And um, <clears throat> I really stress that point because a lot of people um, feel a bit miffed when they've gone through their cancer journey and come out the other end and realise all the wonderful things that we could have actually supported them with. Mm. So, so, so it's easy as that, just self-referral, they can phone you, they can come in. And of course you're, you're very convenient just right across from the hospital. That's in right. Yep. So we, um, we've been in Margaret Chittick House now for three years. Yeah, Margaret was the benefactor who, um, whose estate allowed us to purchase the property across the road from the hospital. And um, we are quite obvious. We've got a big daffodil in the car park. So yeah, and, and just look for the yellow. <laughs> yeah, of yellow. look for the yellow daffodil. We're easy to find. Um, but yes, we have um, our telephone number is listed: oh six three seven double eight oh three nine, and we're also um, on email if somebody would like to inquire about services. You don't have to register with us. There's lots of um, things that you can interact with us over. Um, and but without registering so without being part of our client base mm -hmm. so we take walk-in inquiries or one-off inquiries as well um, we have an 0800 cancer nurse line as well which um, if you ring that number you get um, a cancer nurse a trained cancer nurse 
and they also, um, while being generic to the whole of New Zealand, that um, they can also plug you into our services out there in the Wairapa. Fantastic, and it's far more than just information, isn't it? You do you do driving, you do the look good, feel better, all those all those wonderful services that you can provide. Yeah. So look, we have an absolutely huge menu of things going on now, and um, we just couldn't do what we do without our volunteers. So the Cancer Society has around about a hundred regular volunteers involved in programs in any one week um, at the Cancer Society. So Anna talked about the volunteer driving service. Well that's the jewel in our crown really. Um, the service has been running um, <coughs> and increasingly um, providing a very large need um, for 15 to 20 years or so now. So yeah, there's around about um, 40 drivers a month transporting people over the hill to their cancer appointments, their diagnostic tests or treatment. Um, the volunteers give their time in their vehicles and Cancer Society assists them with their petrol. So for us we need to fundraise to reimburse our drivers. Um, but it is a win-win. It's a total win-win situation because the drivers um, are quite passionate about what they do they enjoy meeting people and they enjoy feeling that they're giving something back to the community. Uh, likewise, the patients get a Rolls Royce door-to-door -door service. Absolutely. Um, and that really came into its fore and the strength of our service during COVID last year. We had, uh, we had some age restrictions on the drivers that we could use and um, so that severely narrowed down the service that we could offer. But those who were young, under the age of uh, 60, mm. <laughs> were, um, they really stepped up. So we had five or six drivers who did most of the driving over COVID and uh, they were pretty tired by the end of it, but they, they were, we rewarded them and acknowledged them because it was such an amazing effort mm. that they all put in. So we hope we don't go back into that sort of situation this year. Well, but <laughs> no promises, but I think Wairapa is doing um, the best it can and doing really, really well in terms of keeping each other safe and we're getting people that aren't going to work when they're sick. They're keeping kids away from school already when they're sick. So we're doing all the right things. So That's fingers right. crossed. Yeah. Um, we'll see how it goes. We'll yeah. get some more news today about about what that looks like. But So with, with the driving, of course, there are people that um, are diagnosed with cancer they're going through their journey, they're having their chemo, they're having their diagnostics over in Wellington or Mid-Central, obviously, and they don't necessarily have the support of their friends in Fano, and you can exhaust that support quite quickly. So those dri that driving service, I imagine, is, is absolutely essential. And great that it could go over COVID with the bubble of being together you know, in a car. There must have been um, some concern about whether or not that would have to stop, which, of course, would really affect your clients. Yes, we put, had to put quite stringent rules and regulations around the drives. Um, Cancer Society drivers were deemed essential service um, by the Ministry of Health during the outbreak. So um, all drivers were screened, obviously, for COVID contact or any flu-like symptoms before they were allowed to drive. So there was quite an extra layer of work for us. Yeah, but also um, the drivers sit in the front and the passengers sit in the back. The drivers wear masks, um, hand sanitizer is available to all parties and um, the um, <clears throat> if it's a family bubble at level two, which is where we're at at the moment, um, the driver will sit in the front and, and the passenger in the back with a person from their family to accompany them. So each time we go into a COVID alert level, we have to review that criteria and look at how safe it is for our drivers and for the patients. Mm. Um, the drivers are also wipe down their cars in the areas where people have sat um, after the drive. Yeah. Mm. So um, we're abiding by all those rules um, as best we can. Yeah. What was your other question? It was about um, oh support. Yeah, so Cancer Society has um, we have a lot of extra supports. So when you sign on to us as a client, um, you become eligible for a package of care, and the package of care may include counselling, 
uh, massage, but we're not massaging during COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, And the massage service is targeted at um, clients who are having chemotherapy. And it is (coughs) mainly used to alleviate nausea. And um, and so it's a limited service, I guess, yeah, because mm-hmm. um, there are some rules and regulations around massage. But we also have a visitor service. Uh, the visitor service is um, generally um, catering to people, as you described before, who may not have any fa- family or friends or whānau here in the Wairapa. Mm. Um, so we have this wonderful scheme going with um, the community cooks at Perry Street at our community centre. We get um, meat donated to us by farmers. There's a scheme that was instigated by one of our patients this year and they donate the meat which is processed through cash and meat processing um, butchery and we donate that to community centre and community centre makes meals and they come back to us in the freezer pre-packed and frozen ready to go out to oh, yeah, fantastic. Um, to patients. We're particularly targeting people um, who's, who are vulnerable, who are on their own, who are just immediately post-treatment. It's not a sort of a service that we could sustain forever, so it's a one-off. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The visitors um, are in a position to be able to run errands and perhaps do weekly calls just to check in. Um, they complement any other services that people may have involved with them. So, And it is always around a cancer episode. So mm-hmm. once that treatment is finished, then we wean out yeah. right yeah 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 we have um um the counseling service which is um again paid for by cancer society we have um prosthesis and fitting service sorry can i just interrupt the, the counseling service because i imagine that's that's quite high demand so the counseling service is that just for the patient themselves or for their family members as well how does how does that work so counseling can be for the patient but it can also be for family members yeah mm-hmm. yeah because um you know not everybody in the family copes well um and so it's it is um we open that up to everybody mm-hmm. yeah we have also done um some whanau family sessions over the last couple of years um, with our counsellor and sometimes that works better than just a one-on-one counselling session um, just helps everybody in the room to air their feelings and talk about what might happen or could happen that kind of what if scenario mm. um, and maybe just make a little bit of a plan so yeah. some really it's a really crunchy business isn't it dealing with cancer and yeah. how it affects the family and how it you know affects everybody around them and everybody deals with it in different ways and you know having to being able to have somebody professional to help with those with children particularly is is really quite important isn't it yeah children mm-hmm. and, um, and cancer it, it's quite a, an area I think of need in this community mm-hmm. that we possibly don't cater that well to um, for us at Cancer Society, we do have can- counsellors that work with children. Um, we tend to outsource that um, support to people with more expertise. And um, so there is a lovely program called the Seasons Program, which is now run in schools, which is about grief and change and illness in families. And so we do tend to use that program a lot these days. Mm. Um, and also there are some skilled practitioners um, around the Wairapa which we uh, can send families to. Um, yeah, so there is a number of national resources as well for supporting children like Skylight mm. um, who are quite well known throughout mm. the country. And they have really good resources online that are free. Um, but uh, yeah, and we also have now the uh, social worker in schools program which um, <clears throat> if the social worker in a school is aware that a family is going through some change um, that may cause some issues with the children, then you know we would liaise with them. I think the big thing to note from Cancer Society Service is that um, we're health professionals who've worked in the community for a long time 
for us in the Wairapa, we have two nurses, myself and um, Maria Mudford. And one of the skills of community nursing is knowing where to plug people in to the right place to get the right support. Mm. So in a way, we're a little bit of a filtering service. Well, sort of a network, aren't you? Yeah. You're, you're sort of acting as a navigator for, for right. people to put them in touch with everything. Yeah. And, and you know, thinking about the children and the service, there are places where we are in Wadarapa quite thin on the ground in terms of the services that we can offer. And mm. and I guess the message to uh, people listening and to people in the cancer space is, contact the Cantor Society who will put you in touch. If it's not a service that you provide, you will know yes. Um, yeah. where you can connect people to and what might be available to them because I think that's that's pretty much the principle of this this radio show actually in Wraparound Wairapa is there's mm. so much available out there mm. um, people don't know about it. Mm. So the, the idea of this is to connect people to those services and I see you at the Cantor Society as, as you're providing, that. that's probably the the biggest brightest hat you wear is that you can um, connect people join the dots for people and make life better for someone going through that cancer journey and if you can't do it you'll know someone that that can yeah well we'll try our best yeah Yeah, I've been around for a while now so (laughs) yeah I feel like we you know we we're doing our best yeah and it seems extraordinary to me and and Susan you'll probably have an opinion about this but it seems extraordinary to me that Cancer Society in Wairarapa has been around a long time. It has got a high profile. People do know about it. And yet, from what you said at the start of the show, there are still people that are diagnosed with cancer that go through the journey on their own, not knowing the services mm. that, that you can provide them, mm. which is really, really sad. Well, we we might see somebody once, but yeah. we may be able to provide them with some information that they absolutely need at that time. Yeah. And that's fine. Um, we may not see other people because they're really well resourced they're good at finding out the information that they Mm. need for themselves and they know exactly how their treatment regime is going to go yeah yeah the disadvantage for people not to know that you know to not not to connect with you that could that's quite sad so we need i mean i I suppose it's a challenge for everyone out there and relay Mm. for life susan will help us do that but a challenge yes. for people to make sure that people know about the service. I that's think available. one of the best things was getting Margaret Chittick House mm. because Teoriori Road is such a thoroughfare and we're directly opposite the hospital. Yeah. And I that's think that's been connection. the greatest yeah. thing that people mm. walk out from maybe just having had that diagnosis and right across the road they can just go in, take a deep breath and say to somebody who understands, I've just been told I've got cancer. Mm. And that's the biggest thing mm. and we're very lucky to have that. Yeah, we mm. yeah, we certainly are. And I think too the um, the development of having chemotherapy available for some of our patients yes. here at, locally at Marston, in Marston at Wairarapa Hospital is, that's, a, that's mm. a good thing too and that must have, you know, upped um, the ante in terms of people knowing what is available as and well. And taken the stress away too from people yeah. from that journey over mm. the hill, mm. which is time consuming Mm. and stressful Mm. but to have the support here and the treatment here for Mm. them has made a huge difference and I think a lot of people comment on that don't they how lucky they've been to just go to Wairarapa Hospital Mm -hmm. have that with their family around them or somebody they know (coughs) who's there and they can go home Makes just makes such a change not to have difference. to have that sort of yes. two hour or hour and a half travel to, yes. to get there. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. very lucky. Mm. Yeah. can Society have been um, delighted to be able to partner the DHB with setting up the chemotherapy unit. Um, we secured funding for all the equipment for the unit. So, and we were heavily involved in, in lobbying as well to try and get um, get the unit going. Um, and it just takes a couple of people with a bit of vision and all of a sudden it happened. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. we have um, Bob Francis is the Cancer Society ambassador and um, he's a bit passionate about this. So he was one of the advocates that was working quietly in the background to, to really push this. And I think it's just such a wonderful asset now to wire up a DHB. Mm, mm. And as Susan said, the clients in terms of convenience. Mm, mm, mm. Make all the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think we all know that when you're going through some medical situation, to have the support of your family is one of the biggest mm. things you can have to help with your treatment or recovery. Mm. So it's a relief not only for the person having the treatment but for their family to know that it's going to be much easier for them just to have it so close to home. Mm, mm, mm. Absolutely. Mm. It's a, it's a mm. great thing. Mm. 
And of, of course, it doesn't suit everybody, and we can't not not all no, the patients can no, can have no. chemo here with us. But no, but those right. that can, I'm sure that they do yeah. they do thoroughly mm. appreciate it. And you know, having the four chairs, I think, has has made a huge mm. difference for a lot of people. Mm. And um, I'm just I'm just looking just into at the list that you provided me of all the things that we want to talk about, and recognizing mm. that we're already two thirds through the program, mm. it just goes mm. so fast. But I know. you've got something there with you that you want yeah, to... Yeah, I think the, um, our our biggest focus now, and has been for a few years, is post-treatment support. Um, survivorship care planning, SCPs is the new jargon, and um, Kent Society has been running a program for many years called Living Well with Cancer. But we've actually fine-tuned that now and um, it's a moving on after cancer treatment program where you actually establish a survivorship care plan. And um, Australia and England do this and it's well known that when you finish treatment and all those wonderful people you've had in your life move away because they're no longer needed, i.e. your treatment team, you can feel a bit down. And it's, we're finding that it's a terribly vulnerable time for cancer patients when their treatment finishes. Because they'll go into something like three or six monthly visits with their specialist and that might only be the only person that they see with anything to do with cancer after finishing treatment. So we've been running these courses now for 10 years and they're extremely popular. We do a moving on after breast cancer and a moving on after bowel cancer because they're the two most um, prominent cancers in the wire upper at the moment for us and um, <clears throat> it's a Saturday workshop usually from 9 till 3 and it's a combination of people that come in and um, it's fun, it's collegial and you come out with a plan and hopefully have made some friends moving forward who are on a similar journey to you who've all completed treatment and uh, mm. um, are ready to move on into survivorship so yeah, it's quite exciting and um, certainly um, something that um, we will be continuing to do, mm -hmm. to offer. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds great. It's quite a, an odd thing, isn't it, having been involved um, with various cancer patients for, you know, over the years. When you come out of that, you had your treatment, you come out of that, you're in remission, it's life as normal and suddenly that doesn't define you anymore. So mm. it, it must be a really, I mean, I, I know people do struggle with that. And mm. I'll always remember a beautiful little kid saying to me with that, we were talking, um, mother had, had cancer, um, went through the treatment um, and was then out the other side and the child said, but has she still got cancer? Mm. And that question mark over, are you still a cancer patient? You've been a cancer person for this long period of time and all of a sudden, you know, who are you now? Mm. How does how does that fit? And do you have to continue to be careful? And you know, mm. all of those things. So it's it's quite a yeah, well, difficult. That, that's the six million dollar question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the bit we unpick <laughs> mm. in those courses. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you're right. Yeah. Mm. It's about who we perceive ourselves to be at the end of all of that. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose that's quite a good quite a good um, segue now to talk about prevention. Should we talk about prevention, what yeah, people can sure. do to keep themselves yeah. well? Um, well, our health promoter, Joanne, <laughs> went back to the UK on holiday on the 16th of March last year and never got back to oh. New Zealand. So we're very sad to have lost Joanne, but she was working on our health promotion campaigns. Um, and yes, she's uh, staying in the UK now, so we, we're just uh, limping along at the moment, but hope to fill that position very soon. But... Um, Everyone, I think, is probably familiar with the SunSmart campaign, which Kent Society um, has been involved with for many, many years through the Health Promotion Agency and SunSmart. I think we've got 12 schools in the Wairarapa who are accredited and some that are due to be re-accredited. So I think of the 32 schools, we can do better. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there's an opportunity then. So anybody yeah. listening from any of the schools that's not yeah. accredited needs to ring Jacinta <laughs> at the yeah. Cancer Society. We're, uh, we're pretty keen to get some form of, it doesn't even have to be the accreditation process, but even an informal way of actually 
uh, bringing to the attention of the school boards um, safety in the playground, shade and shade uh, for children, sun hats and sunscreen etc. Um, the other campaign that Wairapa should be proud of is the Fresh Air campaign. This was um, an initiative by Christchurch Cancer Society and it follows and mirrors what's happened in the rest of the world around Fresh Air cafes. In other mm -hmm. words, um, these cafes voluntarily decide to join the Fresh Air project and be smoke free for outdoor dining. So we have eight cafes that participate in the Wairapa, so that's fantastic and we're hoping to grow that number this year. Be proud Wairapa, we're the only area in the greater Wellington region that have taken up this initiative. So Well it's a good one to be proud of, it's so nice to be able to go and eat out and yes. not have smoke in your face. It's actually it's, we're, the project we're working on at the hospital at the moment actually is um, getting a quote for some more smoke-free incentives. We have that dreadful um, place at the front of the hospital, as almost every hospital in New Zealand, mm. if not every hospital in New Zealand has, where people just go straight outside the door to smoke. Um, and of course we're a smoke-free facility. The whole of the site of the of the Wadarapa Hospital is smoke-free, but everybody sort of um, conglomerates and accumulates and, yes. and you know sticks around that front, so you have to walk through that wall of smoke yes. to get in and it's and I know it happens everywhere but it's terrible so we're trying to look at some um, some stringent and very quite strong opportunities to um, get people moving away from the front door. Maybe you can be a fresh air project. It's a hard, <laughs> yeah well there you yes. go, maybe we can, it's a very difficult thing to do but I, and I do think that mm. we're quite a long way away mm. still from the smoke free 2025 initiative that you know I, I really, yeah mm. but there are a lot less people smoking nowadays, mm. I mean you see someone smoking in a car now and you look at them don't mm. you you can see them driving along and you look at them and wonder how on earth that they can be doing it because it's just not yeah. done anymore all my grandchildren if they see somebody in the street will say to me grandma that person's smoking like they're doing something highly illegal because Absolutely. to them that's something you just don't do yeah and so they're quite horrified when they see somebody with a cigarette and and bring it back to cancer there's there's obviously a strong correlation with cancer and smoking isn't there absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so we don't want people to i think smoke. everybody knows that yeah. one now yeah absolutely <laughs> yes. even those smokers who choose to continue smoking absolutely so talking yeah. about health promotion we've got the sun smart and we want everyone to be smoke free yeah. Yep. So there's lots of advocacy work going on by the Cancer Society. Um, in recent years we've become quite militant. We have a medical director called Chris Jackson who's not afraid to say what he thinks. And um, so we've... Cancer Society's biggest success, I guess, is in lobbying and getting the Cancer Control Agency um, or the new Cancer Strategy Group up and running. Mm -hmm. And they've already produced their first report around cancer in New Zealand. One of the things that um, we don't do well in New Zealand is record incidents of cancer. So in 2013 they started to do that. So we're starting to actually finally see the true picture of cancer and its impact um, on New Zealanders. And one of the things we know from the report is that um, for Māori there is a poor outcome mm -hmm. um, from cancer. So, um, hey, there's lots of work to do, lots of areas of need, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot more advocacy work that we will continue to do. Mm. Mm. Good, good. We can help you, I'm sure. I'm sure there's people out there listening that we can um, get in behind the Cancer Society and provide the support that we need to ensure that your service and the advocacy work to improve the outcomes for all of New Zealand, um, we can all get in and do it, and we can do it. Particularly Relay for Life. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. That's our biggest fundraising for this year. Yep. And we and did have fun. a ball. Yeah, we did have a ball last year that we were going to do, but of course COVID stepped in and that had to be cancelled. So we're really dependent on fundraising because we get no government funding. And Relay is a fun event. So we say to people, do you fund raising for cancer and then come along and have a fun weekend remember those we've lost support those who are going through their journey and give us the funding to help those in the future absolutely pennies out absolutely so anybody with a purple bucket in the relay for life um hold it up again susan so we can there we are 
Oh, the camera's it not needs, on you. It needs some <laughs> money. It. This bucket needs some money in it. It's not rattling. <laughs> we need it to be full. But you'll see those around some places in the Wairarapa. Uh, there's one at the Marston Club, and I think we've got a few more scattered around. And if people want to come in and do a fundraising for Relay for Life, we can give them all the official material. And that's something important that people realise, that all the funds that are raised go to help people in the Wairarapa. The relay teams themselves don't benefit from the funding. We pay that $10 to cover the administration costs for relay and then everything the teams raise goes back to the Cancer Society locally. Which is incredibly important. So what, what's raised here stays here. And Absolutely. I think that's, that's fabulous. Yeah. Look, we're completely out of time, which we always do on this show, but it's been so nice to have you with us. Thank Susan you. Susan McWilliam and Jacinta Buchanan from the Wadadapa Cancer Society. And if you want to get hold of Jacinta at the Cancer Society for anything, 0637 39 That's been a long time since I've said that <laughs> number. Lovely to yeah. have you on, on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Anna.